This is um, Elmo, obviously, what used to be a Tickle Me Elmo. I sort of got rid of the tickly bits. I have no particular issues with Elmo. We're not on bad terms, but it just seemed really hilarious to take such a beautiful, innocent, child-friendly object and mount it so gruesomely to this beautiful taxidermy plaque. This was a custom job for my friend. He would like it to mimic a character from a movie called Fright Night. The original, not the remake. <clears throat> I'm really deathly afraid of clowns. And this goes back to my mom showing me it as like a three-year-old and the poltergeist. This was um, an attempt perhaps at exercising some demons, although I don't even like looking at them. I don't like being in the same room as them. It'd be fine by me if they didn't exist, so I really don't know why I made them. I'm China Harrell, I'm 28, and I'm from Pittsburgh. I'm mostly airbrush, do a lot of painting, props, masks. You can get a lot of really cool techniques out of airbrushing, very simple things like a little extra rust or scuff on edges. You can also get some aging just on how much you choose to airbrush an area, just leaving some areas not as heavily airbrushed will give it that look like it's been worn. But that's your basic start to finish acts here at Spectre Studios. Spectre Studios is a Halloween or haunt company uh, specializing in masks, props, costumes. Most of what I do since I've been at the studio is uh, customizing masks. That mask right there, it's called the Roswell. And that's in its natural form as it goes out. This was honestly just an experiment of colors using their acrylic inks. Wanted to see how they'd look with layering and sp splatter effect, if you will. Coming out from behind a tree, just looking at you, and then turning away and running. Yeah. I guess I carry more humor with it than actual fright or fear of any kind, which I suppose is good since we're all gonna die someday. I did not yet have insurance. I usually try to wait things out. Doesn't matter if I'm bleeding profusely from any part of my body. If I can wait it out, I'm good. So I assumed that having trouble breathing was just this thing that was gonna pass. Um, and I found myself on the third day of this being so excruciating that I was laying in a bathtub with hot water trying to loosen things up on the phone with my dad crying because I didn't know what to do. And he just forced me to go. He's like, wake up your roommate, go to the hospital. We'll figure out how we'll pay for it later. I got to the hospital. They checked me in. And uh, when the doctor came back in, he said, I've got good news and bad news. I was like, all right, let's hear it. He's like, well, the good news is you're not dead. Okay, so the bad news. Uh, he went on to explain that I had a pulmonary embolism, which is a blood clot in your lungs. And I actually had several of them from what the CAT scan showed that 70% of my lungs were inhibited by clotting. Uh, later, all found out to be caused by birth control. I am of the three lucky percent of women who can't take any kind of hormonal birth control. The doctor said I was probably a week away from either a heart attack or a stroke. Either way, at my point, they said it would have been fatal. So I spent the next five days hooked up to breathing machines and doing different therapies and having lots of shots of insulin and blood thinners in my stomach. It was a really, really terrible, terrible experience. And, um, you know, instead of being thankful I was alive, I spent a good portion of that thinking, how am I going to pay for this? And I was looking at a bill of over $100,000 that was going to be garnishing wages, that I wasn't really making anyway. Um, it was a really, really scary time. Since then, uh, my insurance here has kicked in. It is by far the best health insurance I've ever even heard of. I know doctors and nurses who are jealous of my health insurance. So real big ups to the bosses. It's just really hard watching other friends of mine. Most of them are artists who can't go when they have a cold, who break their wrist and that's that. They just feel like they have to sit on this injury because they can't afford to do anything about it. I just don't see how that's something that you should have to put a price on.